in out in the hallway, and I said, um, I went up to the micro and I said, hey, all right, I see it in a minute. She goes, she, she came out. Ladies, I couldn't hold it together anymore. I ugly cried in the hallway. I'm like, all right, you're crying. I can't lie, you're crying. And, and I'll never forget her face. She, I'll, I'll never forget this as long, until the day I die, I'll never forget. She put her hand here, and she looked at me, and she went, Debbie, please don't tease me. Now I'm really ugly crying. I mean, people are going by in the hallway. You going all right? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I said, Harry, I grabbed her arm. I pulled her back to my lap. And I said, there's you. And there's me. <laughs> she goes, your kid, the kid's bad. I said, no, different. It's, I, I've been, I said, the, the last four hours I've seen like 50 years. <gasps> She's crying. Now think about this, ladies. She was going to have a DNC the next day. I'm crying for her. And I, we're both standing there in front of the test tubes. And we're both crying. I'm really crying for her. I'm so happy for her. I said, Harry, your husband is he's so happy, isn't he? She goes, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> in fact, I'm a little scared to go. I'm just a little scared. So she goes, oh, I can't believe it. I can't, I, I can't, she's going, I can't believe it. And I just let her sit down. I said, just sit down. And then she's going, but Debbie, I was getting a DNC in within hours. I said, I know, oh my goodness. Nine months later, to the month, so this was April, 1979, January 28th, Harriet has a baby. January 29th. I have been. <laughs> we are both in the hospital together, standing in front of, in our robes, in front of our babies, and we're crying. And the thought came later on as I thought about this, don't tell me God's not faithful. Don't tell me God is not faithful. I was so, I was so blessed for her. Bill did get over it, you know, it took him a couple days to go, okay, well, you know, this wasn't in the plan, but this is God's plan, I guess, so this is what we're going to do. God is so faithful, and ladies, we have to trust his timing. We just have to trust his timing. Aren't you glad God doesn't say, understand everything I do? No, he just says, trust it. Just trust where you are. Just trust it. Um... There was actually, actually a hepatitis outbreak in the lab. So I was four months pregnant, and Bill said, you got to quit. You're, you're done, because I can't take any, you know, chance of anything. And I was like, bye, you know. Real happy. I was real happy. Quit. Anyway, so how do we respond to letdowns when I, when I remember her each time somebody would come in pregnant? before we found that she was pregnant. I loved her response. I'm so happy she in her little southern drawl, like my little daughter and all. I'm so happy for you. Oh, that is so sweet. I, I just loved it. I mean, our response, again, is everything. So how do we respond to let, let downs in life? Number one, don't blame, don't blame God and stay far away from offense. Number two, we fight the devil. How do we fight the devil? That little bookmark I gave you is part, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. Get it in your, in your heart, get it way down in your heart, and say, fill your mind with his word. I, I love to say, um, because I came from a real hard place before I got saved, and I love to say, Jesus saved my soul, but the word of God saves my mind every day. Every day, it just saves my mind. And speak that God's speak God's word out. Listen, speech precedes manifestation. Speech precedes manifestation. Isaiah fifty five says, "So is my word that goes out from my mouth." This is the Lord talking. So is my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me void, but will accomplish everything I send it. 
Everything I send it to, it will accomplish. And we have to know. And some of us ladies who have been in the church, we, we know this. We know this. We'd have to teach the younger ones. Keep speaking that word. Keep saying that word. Keep going. I remember um, our daughter, when she was in our oldest, the one who I was looking at in the test tube, when she was uh, a freshman in high school, um, there was a, a little girl, girl, a gang of girls, and they called themselves the UGBs. And I won't even tell you what that stood for. They had such low self-esteem. There was about seven of them. And I learned that a couple of them didn't even, they didn't even live in our school district. They were from not so great neighborhoods. So their parents gave names of friends and addresses of friends in our school district so they could go to the school. And so they called themselves the UGBs. I'll, I'll tell you just maybe one on one later, but it was just, just really sad about these girls. Well, they were bullies. They would take turns beating kids up. They were, everybody, they were all freshmen. Lisa was a freshman and these girls were a freshman too. And I remember Lisa saying, mom, the UGB is after Katie this week. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, mom, they, they take turns beating people up. I said, there's something just kind of, then around Christmas time, Lisa, uh, our phone rang and Lisa said, mom, they, they got Angie. I said, what are you, who? She said, the UGB. I said, Lisa, what's going on? She said, mom, I'm telling you, this is, it's, it's bad. So I decided one day I would walk around the school. Remember, Christy, how does you guys do the Jericho March not, uh, last month? I walked around the school, Sun Valley High School, which was, was my school. And I, Jess, I think you went there too. So I walk around Sun Valley High School and I'm praying. I said, this is crazy. Well, Lisa comes home one day and she goes, Mom, they said it's my turn. I said, who? <laughs> she said, the UGB said it's, it's, she said, Mom, you just have, you have to see what the, I said, who, do, does anybody know? Do the teachers know what, what's going So I got him, I, I went over to the guidance counselor. I said, listen, this is what's happening. These girls, the guy, Mr. Lazic was his name. I'll never forget him. He said, Miss Grandizio, I understand. He said, um, I also live in the school district, but I don't send my kids here. I send them to the Christian Academy. I'm like, so, so you can't keep my child safe? Like, what am I supposed to do as a parent? You, what, what, what does that mean? And the Christian Academy, I can't afford $1,200 a month. I left school that day going, what in the world? What in the world? So... Lisa was crying the next day, so I let her stay home from school. And our in our old church, we were they were having women's um, prayer group in the morning. So I took her over. I said, "Come on, come on, we're getting prayer. We're gonna, you know." So the ladies prayed for Lisa and everything, and came home. And her Lisa's friend Angie called her. They said, "Lisa, tomorrow." I was just not. I was I was crazed. So I said, "I said, Lisa, right now." So let's get in the word of God. We looked up every scripture. You know, weapon formed against you will prosper. I, I mean, we, I made her look up scripture. When a man's ways please God, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. And I made her say them. And she's saying them. I said, now write them. And she's writing them. I said, and she's crying. Mom, please let me go to school. Like, uh -uh, uh -uh, we're going to fight. Because sometimes God says, stand still. Just like he said to the Israelites when the Egyptians were coming. Stand still and see the victory I give to you today. These Egyptians you see today, you won't see again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep still. But sometimes God says, you got to fight. I won't let you lose. But you got to fight. So I'm trying to put into Lisa what my dad put into me. My father used to look at me and he'd say, you be strong, girl. You be strong, girl. So I said, Lisa, you're going to be strong. We're fighting with the word. You're going to fight with it. Mom, please don't make me go to school. Tomorrow. I said, just stop, stop, fight. Let's go. So she'd write, she'd write, and she memorized. We memorized until I don't know how what time that night, 11.30, she finally had to go to bed. And I said, now take this scripture, these scriptures that you wrote, put them in your pocket. She goes, okay. She puts the scriptures in her pocket. And she goes, mom, please let me go to school. I said, Lisa, you can't run. God's not going to let you lose, but you can't 
run, we've got to fight. Now, little did she know, I'm hyperventilating on the inside. I'm sick to my stomach. Let me just stop and see, and, and say this. Can you imagine how many kids tonight are afraid to go to school tomorrow? They're afraid to go. This, this happened 20 some years ago. There are children in our school district. They're afraid to go to school tomorrow. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. So she gets up, she couldn't eat breakfast. And I'm trying to be strong. I said, all right, you got, we're fighting with God's word. You got, you got it in here. You got it in here. We put it in your pocket just in case you forget. Keep taking it out. You know, say this. I said, now you. So she's walking out the door and she's looking behind me and she's going, Mom, please don't make me go to school. And I said, Lisa, honey, you gotta go to school. God, but God's gonna fight. You gotta go to school. So she's walking down the driveway and she's going, please don't make me go to school. You're gonna fight. I said, you be strong, girl. As soon as she was out of sight, I dropped to my knees. I was crying. I said, Lord, I can't do this. You're going to have to help her. I can't do this. <sighs> sick that day. I was, I was literally sick that day. So I stayed home all day. And I'm looking at the clock. I'm thinking, okay, she should be in math class now. And it was at lunchtime where she would tell me, that these girls would start, and then after school, you got it. So her lunch was at 11.30, and I'm sick to my stomach, and I'm going back and forth. I said, Lord, you said, if a man's ways please God, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Lord, you said no weapon formed against us will prosper. Lord, I, I that's all, I, I was fasting that day, and I just kept saying, Lord, this is what your word says. Lord, this is what you said. Lord, this is what your word said. God, you said that. 11.30 comes her lunch time, and then 12.30, then 1.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock. Now, I was fasting, but I have a confession to make. When I get real nervous, I make chocolate chip cookie dough. So I made cookie dough, and I put it in the fridge for when Lisa came home. But this strange car pulls up in front of my house, and Lisa gets out with this older girl. She seemed older, and they're bebopping up the door. And I'm waiting at the door, like, what, 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 what happened? They're bebopping, bopping up the door, and this adorable girl comes in. She was a senior at the at the uh, school. Her name was Debbie, and I thought that was funny because there's not too many Debbies that were this young. You know, she said she was named after her grandma. Yeah, thanks for making me feel young, but. Um, Debbie came in, she introduced herself. Here she was my neighbor, she lived like three streets over. She said, Ms. Grandisio, let me tell you what happened today. I said, okay, and Lisa's smiling. Lisa had gotten on the bus, and Debbie's friend, Debbie was this adorable, she, I mean, she was just adorable, real popular. Debbie's friend, Kristen, was on the bus, and she noticed that Lisa was sad. She said, Lisa, what's the matter? And Lisa said, today, the UGB is you know, they threatened me, and, and, and um, this Kristen went, oh, no, oh, oh, no, no, no. Kristen is off the bus, and she rounds her friends up. Debbie is one of her friends, and they're, they're furious. I mean, there was about 10 of these girls, and they all went into the principal's office. They said, Mr. Miller, we got something, we got something to tell you. This, this freshman is going to get beat up. This year, and Ms. The, the principal said, girls, you got to leave. I, 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 I can't deal with this drama right now. It's okay. So Debbie's telling me this. Debbie said, Ms. Grandizio, I got so mad. She said, so we asked Lisa for her schedule. Lisa, give us your schedule. So Lisa did, and Lisa said, I'm scared. They said, I know. It's okay. So Lisa goes to lunch, and she's sitting there. She couldn't eat. So she didn't eat breakfast. She didn't eat lunch. She's sitting at the cafeteria table. And her friend Angie, who had gotten beat up at Christmas time, 